Next, we're going to take a look at Sprite.ASM. This is the ASM, or Assembly Language Programming, that makes up the game that we, or the little demo that you just saw. So, use Context to edit this software. Context is a free editor. One of the best parts about it is that at the top, it has a highlighter option. If you download the 6502 Assembly Highlighter, it color codes all the code for you, and it makes it a lot easier to read. Starting at the top, we can scroll through the code and see how it is organized. The green lines, that they show up green with a highlighter, that separate major portions of the code. It's unnecessary, but it makes it easier to see. All this code is the code that makes up that demo you just saw. Starting at the top, as you see, these are comments. So anything here with a semicolon that shows up in green, just like these lines, are comments. These are not actually read by the compiler. These are there for you to help you understand better what's going on. All the code that you see on the left is the actual code. Starting at the top, we declare some variables for the buttons. So instead of using memory locations, we use something called buttons, old buttons, and just pressed. These are three memory locations that we define in the beginning. Then we have the NES header right here. We're not going to talk about this in too much data. I mean, I mean, in too much detail. But this data is used by the emulator to know about the game. So if you were actually putting this on real Nintendo or a Famicom or the $10 computer, you wouldn't need this header data. But just like the information in maybe an MP3 file, which tells you the name of the artist, the name of the song, in an NES file, this header data tells you about the game or demo that you're going to play. Then we scroll down to a very important part. It says reset. This is the reset routine. So you can see here in the beginning, that as it says in the comment, we turn off the screen and we clear the memory. These are just simple loops that write zeros to these two memory locations and zeros to a bunch of different memory locations in RAM. When you turn on the NES, it's very important that you clear the memory. Because unlike modern computers, you don't know what's laying in memory when you flip the switch. Same thing goes with the $10 computer. So you want to make sure that you've cleared all the memory before you start putting things in the memory. Then we set some initial values for the variables. Up above, we saw buttons, all buttons, and just pressed. Again, we don't know the initial state of those locations at startup, so we put zeros in all of them. Then we have a loop here that says warm up. We're waiting for the PPU to warm up. We talked about the PPU, or picture processing unit, before. This little loop of code allows the picture processing unit two cycles to warm up. Next, we get to something very important, which is loading the palette. We've seen before that we can edit the CHR data, we can edit the name table or background data without actually affecting the palette. I've said before that the code is where the palette is changed. That's exactly what's happening here. First thing we do when we access the VRAM or video RAM is point to a location. Here we're writing to a location, which is 3F00. This is a 16-bit location, but the NES is only 8 bits. So we have to write this location in two parts. We write the 3F to 2006, then we write the 00 to 2006. This points to the palette in video RAM. Then what we do in this loop is load the palette. We're loading from a part in the code called palette. Well, that part's all the way at the bottom, so let's take a look. Here we see palette, just as we saw in the PowerPoint earlier when we were looking at the colors in Mario. There are 16 colors for the background, 16 colors for the foreground or the sprites. These numbers don't look like colors, but if we reference this palette here, we can see they all match up. So let's take a look. Our background, the first color is the background color or the transparency color. As we said, that repeats. So we see 0F here. 1, 2, 3, 0F is going to always be here. Just as we see here, 0F, 1, 2, 3, 0F. Actually, all these other ones are 0F because we're not using them. The reason we put 0F in there is because if we look up on the palette, it's black. 
black's a background color, it's a transparency color, that's the one we're using. Then we have 30, which is white. 21, which is a little medium blue, and then 10, which is a darker gray. This is the background. So you see we have black, we have blue, we have gray. Let's see if that works. Open it up again. Yep, black, blue, gray. So we know that this background uses the first palette. We put some text in here and it shows up gray. Seems about right. Sprite here is a bright white color. So let's look back at the code. The sprite here, you see a 30, 20, and a 10. The 30 here is a bright white. That's probably the color of the sprite, and it is. So this is where the palette is loaded from, data at the bottom. So let's see where we were. Load palette. So we load to the palette here. Then what we do is point to the first name table in video RAM. Just as we see 3F00 here, we see 2000. So if we put those together, we are looking at 2000, which is 2000. And that's a uh, dollar sign in front means it's a hexadecimal location. So 2000 in hex, that is the name table in video RAM. That is the first screen you see when we load up, um, when we first load that demo. So we point to it, means we're there, we're ready to load the first screen. But first, just like the memory, we have to clear it. So this little loop clears all of the data that's there. Now that it's clear, we go back, point to it again. So we've cleared the screen once, we're back to the beginning. Now we're loading the screen. This loop here loads the screen. As it says, load first screen, see end of code. Remember this word screen here. You see it? We'll go down to the bottom, just as we did with the palette. We see the palette, and then we see the word screen. It says ink bin, this stands for include binary, test.nam. Well, if we go back to our folder, that file test.nam is the file that appears when you use this name table editor. So when we save this as we did before, it says test.nam saved. And then control Q to quit. We save test.nam. That's the file that is loaded to the first screen. That's why when we go like this and edit it, let's pick another shape here, pick this circle, draw some random shape there. Save it, quit. If we compile it, take a look. Oops, we have to close it because it was already loaded. Let's try this again. There, there's that shape again in the middle. So any changes that you make to this test.nam are going to show up in the code because the code loads test.nam for the first screen. Going back here, we've loaded the first screen. Then what we have to do is initialize the sprites, or the moving objects, or the foreground. You're probably not surprised to see that this chunk of code here clears the memory for sprites. Then we load the sprites into memory. The sprites are read from a location at the bottom of the code again that's called sprites. Go down to here. We see sprites. It says sprite zero data. Sprite zero is the first sprite. There's only one sprite that we have loaded because if you remember, we just have one moving object in the middle of the screen, that one lonely square that moves around. 